All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So I wanted to make a video about 1983 Mr. Olympia, Samir Banut. So a lot of you guys might see Samir on social media because he's still very active on Instagram, and you probably see him in a lot of videos coming out of Venice Beach um, or Gold's Gym in Venice where he hangs around a lot and trains people. So I wanted to make a video about him because he's still in really, really good shape. He's 61 years old. He's constantly posting update pictures. He still has, you know, a great set of abs. It seems like he still eats right and tries to stay in shape. Um, so when I saw some of these recent videos and pictures, I was like, man, I, I don't think I've made a video about him yet. I think it's about time I made one. So like I said, Samir won the Mr. Olympia competition in 1983. So he is one of the few people that have won only one singular Mr. Olympia title. So in the company of Chris Dickerson, who won in 1982, he only won one time. Dexter Jackson, who won in 2008, and then Samir Banut. Those are the only three guys that have only won one Mr. Olympia title. So in my opinion, the early 80s were kind of a period where bodybuilding was in limbo, kind of, where they were trying to figure out what the new standard was because this was kind of post the Arnold era. It was kind of post the Frank Zane era. So after that controversial 1980 and 1981 Mr. Olympia, where Franco won in 1981, Arnold won in 1980, I think that kind of threw a wrench in bodybuilding for a little while because they were so controversial. I think the new standard was trying to be set. Okay, Arnold's gone now. Franco's gone now. What are we looking for? So 1982 and 1983, you had two very different physiques in Chris Dickerson and Samir Banut, and then two back-to-back, uh, -back, one-time Mr. Olympia winners. And that was right before the reign of Lee Haney, who would go on to win eight Mr. Olympias and set the new standard for what kind of physique they were looking for. So at that 1983 Mr. Olympia, Samir Banut placed first and won $25,000. Muhammad Makawe placed second. You had Lee Haney in third place, Frank Zane in fourth place, Bertle Fox controversially in fifth place. I made a video about this as well. Brutal Bertle Fox um, who murdered his fiance. This is the guy we're referring to. He had a great physique at that 1983 Mr. Olympia. And a lot of people feel he should have placed way higher than fifth place. Then in sixth place, he had Jusup Wilkos. I made a video about him as well. Very impressive physique. And some other guys in that lineup uh, that you might you might recognize. You had Albert Beckles in seventh. Um, you had Ed Corney in 14th. And Lance Dreher, who I've made a video about as well, placed dead last. So it was a pretty decent Olympia. There were some pretty big names at that year's Olympia. But overall, um, it was kind of still an uh, in-limbo period for bodybuilding. So let's get back to Samir Banut, a.k.a. the Lion of Lebanon. So he was born in Beirut, Lebanon. That's obviously where his nickname came from. And his very first bodybuilding competition was the 1974 Teenage Mr. Universe, which he won. And at that point, he moved to America. So his competitive stats, he weighed only between 205 and 215 pounds on stage at a height of 5'7". Um, and like I said before, Lebanese. I'm not going to add the baby please in there. So as far as the 70s were concerned, his best competition during the 70s was the 1979 World Amateur Champions, uh, World Amateur Championships, which he won the light heavyweight division, and that is where he earned his pro card. So the 1980s is, is where he really started to shine. Um, so in 1982, the year before he won his Mr. Olympia, he won the or he placed second at the Grand Prix in Sweden, and that was his best placing of the 80s going into the Mr. Olympia. Then 1982, he placed fourth at that year's Olympia. Then, of course, in 1983, he moved up three places and won the Mr. Olympia. So following that, he would go outside of the IFBB and compete in the WABBA organization, which is the organization that Serge Nubray actually founded. And he would win their world championships, which is their biggest competition, back to back in 1985 and 1986. He would also compete in the 1989 Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic, which would be the very first Arnold Classic ever, and he placed fourth there. Then in the 1989 Mr. Olympia, he would end the 80s with a ninth place finish in the Mr. Olympia. So he would compete all the way to 1996 um, in the 90s, and he would compete in the Arnold Classic, which he competed in the 1993 Arnold Classic. His placings were getting worse and worse. So in 1993, his Arnold Classic placing was 13th, and that was the final Arnold Classic he would appear in. Then the final Olympia he would appear in the Open Division would be the 1994 Mr. Olympia, where he placed 19th. Now in 1996, he competed in the Masters Mr. Olympia, where he placed 6th. And in 2011, he competed in the Pro World Masters Bodybuilding Competition, which is an IFBB show, and placed 11th. 
So overall, he had a very impressive bodybuilding career that spanned three decades, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, and he had a Mr. Olympia title. So this guy is definitely, you know, one of the one of the true legends of our sport, a true living legend. So again, he's still alive today, age 61. He resides out in California. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned a little bit about some Mir Benut that you did not know before. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.